Hey guys, welcome back to Bedroom Studio Con. I am XD. Welcome back to my channel. Now, today in this video, we're going to be doing some Ableton Live. And I want to help you guys use what I've been teaching you in FL Studio and apply it to Ableton Live. Because these are basic workflows that I want to teach you guys and you can be able to apply this to any DAW you use. There's different DAWs out there like Reason and Cubase and these are type of things that you just need to know as a baseline to production so that even if you're using the likes of Pro Tools and PreSona Studio One, you can know your way around them because you know these basic things and workflow things. So before we get into this, if you're new to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss out on my future content. So I have a track that I made here in Ableton Live. It's just a basic four bar loop that I was playing uh, when I started. So I'm going to just start a new track and discard this so we can start afresh and get this video going. So what you get first is the mixer, like you see over here. That's usually on the starting page when you open Ableton Live. So do not run away when you see this. I know you, you used to, you know, the step sequencer and uh, the piano roll and the playlist windows, you know, popping up and seeing that. It's a whole different setup over here. So I just want to guide you through that so that you don't um, you don't lose your way. So what we need for now is we need to compose. So we need a way to get to somewhere where we can add no data and make sure we start our tracks. So we want to start with drums. Now in Ableton Live, if you want to switch between the, the mixer mode and the track mode, you have to come this side over here on this corner up here. You can see these are horizontal stripes and these vertical stripes. So if you want the tracks, you can click on the horizontal stripes and then you you know you get your tracks that we have over here and you can do this also by pressing tab you can go back and forth and have that selected so now what we want to do we want to insert no data into these tracks let's say this is our first track that we want to work on and we want to do some drums first what we want to do we want to zoom in here quickly and find our first bar which is from one to two we select that and then we're going to right click and say insert MIDI clip or clips. And then we're going to get that as soon as that is activated, that also activates the piano roll. Nothing is playing because no sound is loaded. It's just a MIDI track. We can see also there's an audio track down here, but we're working in MIDI because we want to add MIDI data. So what we want to do for from now is just add our sounds. First, what we want to do, we want to add a drum, a drum kit. So we have a 606 core kit here, a 707, you know, a 808 and so forth. It's over here on the left side by drums. You can also have sounds, you also have instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects and all that stuff. And you can also have plugins over here as well. But we're not going to use these. I'm just going to use stuff that's native to Ableton Live 10. So this also works if you have older versions of Ableton Live as well. It's the same thing. They didn't change so much. So what we want to select is maybe a 707 core kit. And I'll just drag and drop it over here where it says MIDI. And then there it's loaded. So now this is where all the sounds are loaded. You can see it's kind of like a pad. As you can see here. So I can sample the sounds that I have over here. So if I double click on this clip, we go inside the piano roll, as you can see. So. It's the same thing as in FL Studio. You also get a piano roll here, but you don't get a step sequencer where you just click in steps here. You have to kind of draw all your stuff. So you can come up here and choose a pencil and you can just click in notes. So I'm just, I am just just put in like a kind of a four uh, kick drums. So it's not going to loop because I didn't place my loop markers. The loop markers is these here, this mark over here. I can just drag that back and just zoom out and drag the end back. I can zoom in. As you can see, there's the dots or the steps that I put in that are down here. So this data here is the data that you see here. So this is our playlist and this is where we can add our drum sounds. So this is not playing if I click here, but if I want this to play, I just have to um, activate this headphone icon over here. Now I can audition these and if these are too loud, you can turn them down over here by this blue um, line over here where it says zero. That's when you can turn the preview. You can turn the preview down. So now 
what we want to do after this is add more drums and make sure that we have nice drums let's add a clap over there okay before we get to it we placed our loop markers over here but it's, not, it's still not looping because loop is not activated so we're gonna have to activate it up here so if i just click once it's gonna loop this section there we go now we're getting somewhere so now we can keep adding more stuff into this like some percussion that there add another one there add another one there add another one there okay that one is wrong so you can still do the same thing uh, add no data without using the pencil like if i uncheck it and it's just the mouse cursor i can move around these or i can just double click to draw one And you can also change the velocity of each of these notes by way of just dragging this little thing over here. I don't know what you would call it, but this is the velocity switch or the velocity control. As you can see, the note itself is actually changing color to show you the velocity that you picked. And I can actually select these two and drag them down. And just make sure that they're on the same level. So there we go. Now we have that. Now we want to add some percussion to this. So same thing applies. We can just look for the percussion core kit. There we have it. There's a preview. We just drag and drop it in there. And then just select insert MIDI clips. And then there we go. Then we just load our MIDI data. Now what I like about Ableton Live's playlist, you can copy these things. I can just select them like this and then press control and just drag over. And I can just copy any node data over like that. It'll save you so much time if you do it this way. what else I can add here. Add that tambourine. Okay, that's chimes. We need a tambourine. That's the one below it. Now what I like about Ableton as well is when you're using the drums here, you can actually modify them 
by using this module over here. So for instance, I want to shorten this drum sound. This is the clip over here. I can just lower the sustain. And I also want to shorten the clap. and make it shorter. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Now what we need to add is maybe a sound, a pad, or maybe let's start with bass. So we're going to come here to instruments and you can get a list of instruments that you can have over here. And then we're going to look for some bass and we'll just start with a bass this time. I usually start with pads and keys, but this time we're just going to start with a, with a good bass just to get us going quickly. I'll use uh, the instrument rack. This is, this is kind of a mixture of all the instruments that it has. It's just a collection of uh, stuff that you know uh, that use all the other instrument modules that they have in Ableton Live. So I'm just gonna go and bass and play back these basses. Let me try this uh, electronic electric bass drive. And another thing in Ableton Live is you can use your uh, keyboard, your computer keyboard, to play notes. You can activate this by coming over here and activating this little keyboard icon over here. So if you want to do that as well, you can do that here in Ableton Live. So you don't worry about not having a MIDI keyboard, but you can do this as well. So what I want to do now is do the same thing. I just want to create a little loop. There we go. Or rather, let me extend that. Let me just undo that. Redo the track. Oh, there it is back again. Select that. Insert MIDI. There we go. Double click to insert. sounds good to me so now at this point we need to extend all these tracks and make sure that this bass plays for at least four bars so how we can do this is we can extend this track outward like this you can see it's looping this track again so loop is turned on over here so it's going to loop if i switch this off and then i i pull it's just going to add more empty uh piano roll space that we do uh, that we don't need right now so we just want to loop the same thing so i'm just going to click on loop and then i'm going to extend same applies to these tracks we have made over here they're also on loop so we can just say extend we can even extend all the way to 10 minutes if we want to but this just cuts on time so then there we go now we can do that so what if i want to change the node data on this second bar over here how can i do that well it's simple i can just select this area over here right click and press consolidate over here so if i go inside now i can see the two bars then i can just change this other one but now these other nodes over here are not affected so i can just delete these and then i can just come back to these ones and i can click on loop again to make sure that it loops then i just drag this one out so now it's looping these two bars same applies if you want to loop four bars you just consolidate them 
and make sure that loop is turned on and then you just drag it out then you can get that loop again so we've got our bass now let's add a pad that sounds okay Same applies, insert MIDI clips, there we go. I'll make this one sustain. Let's add some mallet, some bright marimba. Insert MIDI clips. See if we can work on some some nice marimba over here. extend this loop and make sure it keeps repeating so let's say we want to add some reverb to this marimba how can we go about it we can use the sins that we already have here as you see mark delay and reverb and these are the ones that are here over at minus infinite and minus infinite so this is the reverb is on a is on send a the delay is on send b so if you come here you'll see that this is um the a and this is the b so if i move this one up i'm adding the reverb and if i give a bit more gain to the second one that's the delay so if i double click here on reverb i can actually see the reverb and I can be able to tweak it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of mid-range to the reverb. Come back here, I can also add some decay, I can add some pre-delay, I can add the size, and I can change how the, the quality of this reverb, I'll just put it on high, and the diffusion as well. So there's a basic track. Now I could go on and make this track into something bigger and this video will just be a whole hour, two hours long. But I think for this instance, I'm, I'm just gonna wrap this up by showing you the master. We could get to the mixer, but that's a whole other video that I will do in the future for you guys and show you how you can actually mix properly here in Ableton Live. But if you just wanna master quickly and make sure that your track is loud, I'm just gonna show you a trick you can use. I love Ableton because it has a lot of presets that are really really helpful in it if i go to here to audio effects i can go down to audio effect rack this is like a combination of its own presets that it, it has everything ready for you for mixing and for mastering so i'll go into mixing and mastering and then i can just select any here i can select stereo enhanced master or warm wide drums or warm a wide and warm master or a punchy dance master i'll just choose this one for instance and i'll just drop it into the master channel over here so here on this uh, mastering preset, you get these switches, the bass gain, mid gain, uh, mid frequency. So this is just like a group of a lot of effects that is in there. So these are kind of macro uh, macro switches that you have that will help you instead of having to go inside and open all this and then see all these effects that they have loaded here. So this just makes your life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna play this without and switch it on. 
Then I can play around with these. Add some more bass. Take away the mid. And then play around with the high gain. And there's also a compressor here. You can, you know, play with the threshold of the compressor, the gain, and the dry and wet, and the limiter as well. So this is a basic stuff. I know Ableton looks kind of odd when you start to work with it, but it actually looks like this because it's not trying to you know to to please you more with the looks but it's trying to please you with the performance as well on your computer instead of just nice graphics all the time but all these switches work and what i love as well is the automation that you can get here if i go back to my base you can see here it has a lot of switches you can automate all of these things easily and to go to get into automation mode you can uh, come up here by options and so uh, here by view and you can see automation mode. You can click there or you can just click A. It will switch into automation mode. But you see I'm clicking it but it's not working because it's playing the notes. So if I deactivate um, the piano, the computer keyboard from playing piano, it will go to uh, the, the automation side. There we go. Now it can switch. So now I can use my automation. You can automate any switch here in Ableton Live. No matter what it is, you can automate it. Most of the time, FL Studio does the same thing, but some of the switches you cannot automate. So for instance, if I want to automate this, I can just click on this line, click and drag on this other line, and then now it's automation. I can just click anywhere. And I can play around with these. And this is now my automation. My bass will now be moving. As you can see, the switch is moving over here. So that's it for this video. I hope this... Uh, helps you work with Ableton Live. I know it's not much that I gave you right now. I'm going to keep making more Ableton Live videos. If you enjoy Ableton Live and if you found this very useful, let me know down in the comments what you what blew your mind and what you find interesting in Ableton Live if you've never used it before. If you have used if you have used Ableton Live before, let me know what you what you would want me to show you in Ableton Live and you know um Talk to me down in the comments and let me see how I can help you with Ableton Live. And if you found similarities from Ableton Live to FL Studio, let me know what you found that uh, that is the same. But that's it for me in this video. Subscribe down below if you're new. Leave a like if you like this video. I'm going to check you guys out in my next video. I am X and I'm out. Peace, y'all.